You're listening to Janet TV on the radio with Coach D and Heather. This is Janet TV on the radio, and you're listening to Bring It In with Coach D, where we catch up with athletes and coaches from around the world. We are full speed in the Sochi Olympics. My co-host Heather and I will recap the current stories from the ice, or should I say flush, from Sochi. Well, Heather, the medal count right now for the U.S. is nine with three gold, one silver, and five bronze, which puts us in fourth place right now behind Norway, Canada, and the Netherlands. So, Heather, out of nine medals, so far the U.S. women have earned eight of them. Do you think that's a surprise to anyone? And what does it say about the strength of the women's team? It absolutely is a surprise. Um, A pleasant one, for sure. For a lot of people, probably, they didn't anticipate the men doing so poorly. I mean, nobody thought that Sean White was going to fall and get fourth. It's going to benefit every single American out there, whether they know it or not, because there are going to be girls that look at things differently now. I mean, look at the luge. I mean, that's awesome. We, you know, we've watched that girl dancing. I mean, you know, she got with tense, but still, I mean, it's, it's bringing personality, and you actually see more of the personality of the athletes than you do normally and you get to know these people and you identify with them you connect with them you hear their stories and see how hard they've worked and it's just great for women it's great for the u.s and it's great for i mean the olympic sport well let's talk about the medal winners so far the bronze winners include mogul skier hannah kearney who won the gold medal in vancouver in 2010. she was a favorite to win the mogul so i know it had to be a disappointment for her do you think there was too much pressure for her to win back to that gold? Oh, I think so. You know, it's, it's something to deal with. And, you know, if you've never felt pressure in a sporting event or anything like that, you know, you put this pressure on yourself. Other people put this pressure on you. You know, sponsorships are a big thing with the Olympics. You make your money off of sponsorships. And if you win gold, if you, you know, are back to back champion, you get sponsorships you get money. I mean, look at Subway commercials. That's plastered with Olympian. Huge pressure for her. And, I mean, that's just the way it goes sometimes. You know, the the Olympics, the the slush, as you called it, was bad. I mean, it was colder in L.A. than it was in Sochi yesterday. Colder. That's ridiculous. Winter games. Not the summer games. Well, the women's team skate also on the bronze behind Russia and Canada. Although it was a team event, American Gracie Gold shined in her free skate as she scored a personal best 129.38. She'll compete for a medal later in the week for this individual free skate event. The third bronze came from Alpine skier Julia Mancuso, who became the most decorated woman of the Olympic Games, as her bronze medal gave her a total of four from the past three Olympics. She still has more individual events to go in Sochi. Julia is definitely an athlete that handles pressure well. She was flying down the alpine hard surface. Did you get to watch her? I did. Um, They're going. I mean, they're moving at 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, something like that. They're flying. The announcers have talked about them putting the hardening chemical on the ice to make it harder. Then it makes it feel funny. I mean, so a lot of people are having some trouble. I've never been skiing. never been snowboarding. I've heard it's frustrating, so I'll get out. But she's handling it like it was nothing. It was awesome. I wish her the best in her next event. Like, keep winning. Keep going. Well, um, someone that we have actually spoke with and who made history, Erin Hamlin, on the luge. She's at bronze. She's, of course, our favorite because we had the honor of interviewing her before she made the Olympic team. And you can check out that interview on JanetTV.com. 50 years after luge became an Olympic sport, Hamlin took home the first individual medal for the U.S. in this sport. But it wasn't an accomplishment. Seriously. Men or women, guys. Men or women. She's the first medalist in the Olympics in this sport. That's amazing. I mean, you can just drop the mic and walk away at that. I mean, that's awesome. Regardless of what color it is, shoot. <laughs> that's amazing. And kudos to you for getting that interview. Man. I mean, you know, I, I listened to it and I thought it was great, but she was really nice. And I was like, oh man, I really hope she does well. And I had no idea, probably a lot of people have no idea, that we've never won a, a medal, period, in it. I mean, that's not something that the United States 
I, I don't know many events that the United States has never won a medal in, you know? Like, we just do. We're just expected. So, kudos to her. Man, that was awesome. I think she's from New York, and, you know, they showed that piece on her family. The, the whole town was getting behind her. She's from this little mm. town in New York. I mean, you know, you, you just don't know what kind of training that goes in. I mean, it, it's just day in and day out grind for four solid years to get there. And that's, man, I hope she gets every single possible advantage from doing that. I hope that she gets every single, you know, benefit from, that she can get from it. She deserves it. I couldn't agree more. Well, the most recent bronze went to Kelly Clark in the half fight. A strong event for the women as the U.S. went first, third, and fourth in this event. The women's slope style event is favorable to the U.S. women. Devin Logan made history Tuesday, earning a silver medal in the thrilling debut of slope style skiing, the freestyle event. And earlier in the week, Jamie Anderson took gold in women's snowboarding in the new event as well. What a great way to introduce the world to this exciting sport. Oh yeah, I mean people have seen it with you know X Games and stuff like that, but this is a this is a big event. I mean this is the Olympics; it doesn't get any bigger. Yeah, it's exciting. Some of the stuff that they're doing is just mind blowing. It's crazy that they can do it on a board, you know, on feet, like some of the flips and turns and all that jazz that they're doing is just nuts. I I would bust my head. <laughs> well, as you said, the half pipe was was great for the women in the U.S. And the newest gold medal went to Caitlin Fernson and beating out two-time gold medalist from Australia. Quarterfinals, she had to go through the semifinals and then the finals. So she didn't skip straight to the finals. So she she worked her butt off uh, to, to get to the finals and then she actually pulled it out. So how these Olympics have shown us it doesn't matter what you've done previous. All that matters is what you do when it counts. Exactly. I mean, it... it if anything, I mean, you know, we're obviously disappointed that the guys didn't do anything in the half pipe. Uh, it's expected, like I talked about, it's expected for us to win a medal at least, if not gold. Um, so, yeah, it teaches you this is why you play. This is why you show up. This is why you give full effort because, you know, you can mess up and the next thing you know, you have a shot because somebody else did the same thing. I mean, that's why you finish. Like in softball, like you say, that's why you always run out first. Because you never know. Little unknowns have come out of nowhere and eaten the big giant food system in. Well, the U.S. women athletes are headed for a great Olympic Games, and they are just getting started. There's several events still to come, such as the short track events with Jessica Smith, Lanny Barnes in the biathlon, and the fan favorite, the women's hockey team, who beat Switzerland 9-0, to zero, as well as scoring three goals in a span of 55 seconds. These women are on a mission, but they have to get to Canada first. Yeah, the Canada game was crappy. Uh, you saw the decap on it. The referee blew the whistle. The goalkeeper stopped. Puck rolled in, and they scored in. Put them ahead. You never want a referee, an umpire, to decide a game, and that's what happened. And, I mean, I don't know why they only have one ref. I don't know why they only have one ref for women. It, it doesn't make sense to me when... Men's hockey has two. You're going to miss something. I don't know if there are grounds for, you know, appeal, but it's disheartening in that they didn't lose that game. It shouldn't have ended like that, and it did. No fault of their own. But the awesome thing is they're probably going to see them again. Well, if you guys have been watching the Olympics, there's been a lot of uh, injuries, actually. I don't know about the, not the inside as much as the outside events. But that's, what do you think about the conditions there at Sochi? I think it's absolutely playing a factor. I mean, tripping over their own board. What professional snowboarder toes their board and eats it? You know, they just, they don't do it. Because it's so second nature to them. They do it in their sleep, you know. But when you get to the bottom of that pipe or you're not getting that amount of air, your tricks are different. You land differently. The board runs differently. You know, and they have problems with the moguls that they, it was too steep. And, you know, it's just dangerous. They went for as difficult as possible. The hardest games ever. The only thing that they're doing is endangering the athletes. I don't know that there have been this many injuries in the Olympic Games. I mean, it just seems like it's rampant. Well, the athletes are definitely handling not only the competition and the stress of, of everyone watching, but also the situations on the court. Well, stay with us. We are in store for an amazing performance for the rest of the Olympics. This is Coach C, and you're listening to Janet TV on the radio.
You've been listening to Janet TV on the radio.